it's Big East tournament time here at the Amaguire Center. The number two seed Marquette Golden Eagles playing host to the Villanova Wildcats in the 2019 Big East semifinals. I'm Dan Abington alongside Zoe Comerford here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, presenting the conference playoffs live on Marquette Radio. Today we've got two top teams squaring off with a whole lot on the line. Zoe, this one's bound to be exciting. Yeah, Dan, I'm really looking forward to broadcasting some Big East women's volleyball. It's going to be a very exciting one with the number two and three seeds matching up today. So the Marquette Golden Eagles come in as the second overall seed in these playoffs, ranked at number 12 in the nation, overall record of 26 and four, and a conference record of 16 and two, which is the most wins for the Golden Eagles in conference play since joining the league. Emmy was led by unanimous Big East Player of the Year, Ali Barber, all Big East selections, Hope Worch and Martha Konavadov, all freshman team outside hitter, Hannah Vandenberg, and senior setter, Lauren Speckman. So Zoe, this might be Marquette's best team in history, and they've pretty much got an NCAA berth locked up, but they still want to go out with a bang. Yeah, I definitely don't think that you can overlook this, these Villanova Wildcats. Even though Marquette leads the all-time series 18-4 to and have won five straight, I think Villanova took them to four sets last time at the Al McGuire Center, so they are definitely a team to beat and have proved trouble for Marquette. Yeah, Villanova comes in 22 and 8 overall, 13 and 5 in Big East play. Most recently, they beat St. John's last week in five sets to secure the third seed in this tournament. They had a statement win over Creighton earlier this season, and they're led by three All-Conference players in Sophia Howling, Emma Decker, and Ali Olsonowski, as well as last year's All-Big East players Regan Lowe and Claire Delaplane. Villanova still a team on the outside looking in at the NCAAs, so they've got a lot to play for. And Zoe, as they showed against Creighton earlier this year. These Wildcats are not to be messed with. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. So they did lose to DePaul in five sets earlier, but then they had swept Creighton 3-0 at Creighton. So definitely a very streaky Villanova team. They're 22 and 32 in the Big East tournament. And it's interesting, the Wildcats and Golden Eagles have never met in the postseason, even though they have both come six years together. So the starting lineup's being announced on the court since it's the Big East. Playoffs officially, both teams get their hype videos played before, so a little bit of a later start to this game than, than many here at the Al. Marquette's hype video being played now. Yeah, someone I want to talk about, Dan, though, I know we'll be talking about her a lot during, but Emma Decker for the Wildcats, she just became the all-time all leader in assists with 4,124 on November 3rd, so a while back, but she's just such an impressive player. Being 6'3 as a setter is really impressive. It would be like Gwyn Jones being setting up yeah. for Ali Barber or something. Yeah, Decker is the team's starting setter. She was all Big East this season, over 3,000 assists in her career, which is not an easy thing to accomplish. Uh, so the starting lineup for Villanova, while we're at it, at middle hitter, not middle blocker for Villanova, they run with the middle hitter. It's number one, Sophia Howling. Decker is obviously the setter, as you mentioned. Olsonowski, Ali Olsonowski, number eight, plays middle blocker. Sana Barnes is the right side hitter. Claire Delaplane is the other outside hitter. Regan Lowe is a libero. And Anna Morse also plays in the starting lineup as a libero slash defensive specialist even though she doesn't have the different colored jersey. And Marquette, no change in the lineup today. Hannah Vandenberg, Hope Worch, and Allie Barber at the outside hitter spots. Quinn Jones and Elizabeth Orp at middle blocker. Lawrence Beckman setting. And Martha Konavadov is libero. So Zoe, we were talking a little bit before this about our expectations for this Big East playoffs. I want to hear your prediction for this matchup. For this matchup, okay, I think that it will go to four sets. I think Marquette will ultimately win, but I think in the fourth set it'll be close, like 25-23. But Marquette will end up taking the 3-1 victory at the Al. I mean, even though they don't have as much of fan support I thought, I think they still are going to come out here and be like, all right, this is our home. We're going to protect this core. It is Thanksgiving break. Exactly. You can't expect that many fans to make their way here. But yeah, it should be a really, really close one. I saw something in the uh, Villanova press release that said that this game, all season long, it was uh, each set was decided by seven points or less. So in all seven sets the teams played, it was decided by seven or less, which is pretty interesting. I mean, sometimes you don't see a team like Marquette only win by seven in each match. 
No, you don't. But they did. No, you don't. And I think the big thing was last game when Marquette beat Villanova here at the Al McGuire Center last. It was so Villanova took the first set, and then after that they just dropped three straight. But the second set was still 26-24. So I think Villanova has a lot to prove here, coming back to the Al McGuire Center, saying, okay, if we take that first set again, it's going to put Marquette in a little uncomfortable positioning. And plus, Villanova has a whole lot to play for today, as we mentioned. They're still a bit on the outside looking in at today's, or at the NCAA field. They have a decent chance of making it, but today would just bolster that resume even more. Marquette, on the other hand, is a surefire NCAA team, and they're fighting to host the first two rounds like they did last season. And as it stands, they would be as the number 12 team in the country, but they lose today. That's no guarantee. I definitely think so, Dan. You're right. So if it, this is a big match for both teams, especially if Marquette would lose to Villanova, they would pr most likely drop out of that top 16 and wouldn't be able to host, which would be not great for them. So I think this is a huge matchup for both teams because obviously Villanova is still fighting for that spot and they want to be in the NCAAs as well. So Marquette wearing their white jerseys and Kanavadov, the liberos wearing the championship blue. Villanova countering with their navy blues and their libero, Regan Lowe, is wearing, I guess, their equivalent of championship blue, even though it's not technically called championship blue the way Marquette is. It's a baby blue kind of color. Kind of strange to see both liberos wearing the exact same color. But, Definitely. You know, happens sometimes. It does occasionally. But this is definitely bound to be an interesting one, Dan. Mm -hmm. So it looks like it'll be Anna Morse starting out, serving this one for Josh Steinbeck's Villanova Wildcats squad. Big East semifinals on tap today. Marquette versus Villanova. And we are underway. Speckman's gonna set this one up for Vandenberg. It's dug up. Barber puts it right down. Allie Barber off the overpass, just slamming that one right into the ground. Marquette's up one. Barbara knew exactly what she was doing. She saw that coming over the net and just slammed it right down where no Villanova Wildcat was. Vandenberg serving now. Decker up to Sanaa Barnes. Marquette gets it back up. Barber's going to get a swing. Puts it off the block. Delaplane gets it up. Decker. Barnes got, has to put a bit of a free ball over. Wirch on the slide. That one gets shanked. Marquette 2-0 lead. Hope Borch is just so powerful on her swings, and she gets, and you, you see that there when Villanova just can't handle it. You don't see Worch come off the slide too often, so that was an interesting play, but she's proved that she can be a right side hitter as well. Decker sets this one for Barnes again, off the hands. Speckman gets it up. Barber's gonna have to just put this one over. Barnes, Decker, swing for Delaplane. Vandenberg got it up. Barber puts that one directly into the net. Four hands up in her face. Villanova gets their first point. Something you don't see too often is Allie Barber going right into the net. She's taking a lot of swings already. That's already three for Allie Barber. And she got all the swings on that possession. Allie Olsonowski back to serve. Middle blocker. Barber gets a, another swing off the top of the blocker's hands. Decker sets it up for Howling. Brought up by Marquette. Wirch, big swing, dug up. Decker gets it over. And that one goes way out off the hand of Barnes. Barnes just got a little too under it, and that's why it went so long. Barnes, 5'9", sophomore, also on the track and field team. She's a high jumper. She can jump out of the gym. She actually won state for high jump. Mm -hmm. Very accomplished track and field athlete as Villanova gets another point. That was Claire Delaplane that found the floor. She was all Big East second team in 2018. Sarah Allman back to serve. Three to two Marquette leads. Barber, huge swing. Low gets it up. Decker for Delaplane off the block. All tied up at three. Delaplane sent that one off the outstretched arms of the Marquette blockers and got the point. A real smart play from Villanova there. Allman serve. Speckman sets it up for 
Wirtz right into the back corner. She can just bring down the hammer when she wants to. When she's coming from the middle like that, you got to get four hands up in front of her or else you have no chance. She's so effective right out of that middle, like you said, and she just gets so much power on it right to that back corner. She can hit from all parts of the floor. And that's a really difficult thing to defend. Sarah Rose and Kuntz come on now. That one didn't even make it over the net for Villanova, so it's an attack error. Five to three, Rose goes back to the service line again. Allman, low, Delaplane gets another attack. Marquette barely gets it back over. Decker over to Delaplane. Kanavadov got it up, but nobody can get there in time. Sarah Rose with the dive, but Delaplane gets another kill. She really packs some power with that arm of hers. She's hitting 333, already three kills on her six total attacks. She's averaging 2.35 kills per set this year. Wasn't an all Big East selection, though. Jones on the slide. That one goes into the scorer's table. Yeah, that is definitely interesting as she wasn't an all Big East selection. Wurch has to tie her shoe. Stoppage in play. All good now. Wurch leads the Big East with 50, 54 service aces this season. Also led the Big East last year in service aces. With 55. Needs one more. Sophia Howling finds the middle of the floor. No Marquette defender was there. And she puts one right down. Six to five. Low serves. Kanavadov, Rose, Jones off the block. Seven to five, Gwyn Jones gets her second kill of the day. She'll go back to serve. Jones is so effective on the slide, just like Jenna Rosenthal was a year ago. Kind of took over that position, a middle blocker. Seamlessly fit right in, because she has always hit off the slide. That's the kind of player she is. Jones with a nice play. Rose tried to get the setter dump, but it was brought up, and then Decker used a dump of her own. She had a little power on that, too. Yeah, she did. That's the kind of advantage you have when you're a six foot three setter. You're able to get those setter dumps a whole lot easier when you can see above the net. Rose doesn't exactly have that. Rose sets one up for Kuntz, the lefty. Low with a nice dig. Olsonowski free ball. Wirch, Rose, Vandenberg. Got one off the block and into the ground. Back to the Speckman and Barber rotation we go. Tina Vandenberg's first kill of the day. All freshman team selection. Has really fit right in after Caitlin Lines went down with the lower body injury. She's been out since October second. 2nd against Xavier. Knavidoff up for Vandenberg again. Barnes gets it up. Good recovery from Villanova. Orf in the middle. Decker gets it back up. Low for Barnes. Marquette able to get it over. Out of bounds. Good hustle from both teams. Good defense. But Vandenberg had to regroup and couldn't find the floor inbounds. Beckman, cross court to Barber, back corner. There's no way to defend that one, Zoe. She finds the seam right between the left and center back. There's no defense there. Her court vision is spectacular. She always knows where the opponents are and, are and just puts it down on the floor where they aren't. When you're 6'5", it makes your court vision a whole lot easier. When you've got four hands in front of you, but you can get above them and find the ground. Another kill for Ali Barber. As she put that one into the hands of Emma Decker in the back row. And it went straight up and over the pin. 10 to 7, Marquette up. Barber now with three kills. Vandenberg serves. 
That one goes way out. Attack error. That one went long. 11 to 7. Villanova a bit out of system right now. Golden Eagles are also on a 3-0 scoring run and hitting a .300, so definitely have a lot of offensive success from them early. Decker sets it up for Olsenowski. Big dig from Speckman. Set up for Wirch into the back row, and that one goes all the way back into the boards. Timeout for Josh Steinbeck. And the Villanova Wildcats as Marquette takes a five-point advantage. 12-7, Marquette leads. And the one thing that I've noticed from Marquette so far, Zoe, they're spreading the wealth. Oh, yes, definitely, Dan. I mean, Hope Wirt and Ali Barber both have three kills apiece. And then Gwyn Jones is up there, too, hitting a 1,000 a at two for two. So Golden Eagles just getting it out to all their hitters and really doing a nice job of it. I mean, they're hitting a point three 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 consecutive uh, combined. And compared to Villanova, they're holding them to just a point one one eight. So definitely spreading the wealth to all of their hitters and getting everyone involved rather than it just being Ali Barber. Marquette siding out at an 87.5 percentage. That's always helpful when the other team can't get serves consistently because Marquette just keeps siding out. Exactly. The Golden Eagles, I mean, Villanova really needs to stop this Marquette run. They're on a 4-0 scoring run, and usually after timeouts, you kind of have a time to recollect and then get one point and kind of cut back into that de deficit. But I think the Golden Eagles are going to think, all right, we have this 4-0 run, and we're going to just keep going and keep killing and being having that offensive success we've had all this first set. So Marquette leads 12-7 here in the Big East semifinals. I'm Dan Evans alongside Zoe Comerford here at the Al McGuire Center. Marquette versus Villanova. Both teams trying to advance to play tomorrow in the Big East Championship against the winner of Villanova versus St. John's, which is occurring after this matchup. Vandenberg serves. Speckman got it up, but nobody was there. She so got her Villanova hand gets a point. She got her hand under it, but Martha Knobloff just couldn't get there in time. Olsenowski serves. Vandenberg, Speckman, Orff. Right side attack. Villanova was in the net. That was Claire Delaplane, it appears. That was ruled as in the net. Delaplane didn't look like she exactly agreed with that call. Neither did Coach Steinbeck. But He's not going to use a challenge this early. Vandenberg not able to get her hands on that one. Delaplane put that one directly in the spot where Vandenberg couldn't get to it. 13 to nine, Marquette's up. Delaplane now up to five kills. Delaplane redeemed herself there a little bit from being in the net and then finishing off with a kill. Speckman for Wirch in the back row, but Delaplane and Howling are right there. Sophia Howling, one of the only players in the Big East to be averaging over a block per set with 1.05 blocks per set for 106 on the year. And that's why she was named to the all-conference team. Service error. Definitely after you get a big block like that, you don't want to have a service error. And that's, I mean, that's just something, it's an unforced error that Marquette just didn't really do anything. They don't, they just stand there and you, just give them a service error and a free point. Especially against a team mar like Marquette. You can't, can't let that happen. But guess what? Marquette got one too, so. Sarah Rose puts one directly into the net as well. So they just trade service errors, 14-11. I think definitely the, te the team that's going to win this match is the one that's going to have the blocks and the one that's going to be more defensive team. Rose for Jones. She was a bit past where the set was, but she was still able to just barely convert it. Got it off the hands of the blockers. 
Jones with her third kill. 15-11, Marquette leads. Wirch, Barber, and Jones all have three kills, so definitely still spreading the wealth for Marquette. Potts put it off the hands of Hannah Vandenberg. Mallory Potts gets her first point. Last season, Mallory Potts had 2.55 kills per sec, which is the second highest for Villanova. And she had nine matches with 10 or more kills. This year, her numbers are even higher up. She's at 2.7 kills per set. She's been relied on a whole lot less, though. Vandenberg into the back corner. That one goes out. She's just wide. Looks like Tice is going to come over and challenge that one. Kanavadoff and Wirch both were pointing and saying that one was in. So Tice is going to use his green card and challenge that, say it was in. Tice's first challenge of the day, so really the first stoppage here other than the Villanova timeout. 15-13, Marquette leads as long as the call stands. Tice has been known to utilize his challenges early, so no surprise here. But Zoe, one thing I uh, I wanted to talk about real quick, mm -hmm. the injuries for Marquette. They've yes. been, they haven't really been helping, <laughs> they haven't been helped as far as health goes because Lines was looked at as coming in and taking over for Anna Hawk, but then she got injured. Lower body injury is what she suffered. Uh, unofficial, at least we, we don't exactly know what the injury is, but she has a leg cast on and it doesn't look like she's able to move too easily. Nope. Madeline Mosier, who's been a key opposite hitter for a while now, past four years, she's mm -hmm. had an ankle injury and she's been in and out of the lineup. And Hope Wirch, she has a big brace on her thigh. So not really sure how much that's affecting her, but it's got to be some kind of big injury that is, this is just a current treatment for. And Speckman's been in and out of the lineup as well. With uh, at, at least throughout October, she was struggling to stay healthy. So this Marquette team has not been helped out by the injuries, but you wouldn't be able to tell that by the way they've looked this season. Exactly, and I think even though Marquette has been plagued by those injuries, I think key pe people have been stepping up, especially like Hannah Vandenberg, like we've talked about, as coming in as a freshman, kind of replacing KJ Lyons. And I mean, KJ Lyons was hitting 2.57 kills per set before her, her injury, so she's been a crucial part and kind of crucial to why Marquette took uh, Creighton to five sets earlier this season. So she's, she's been a huge, it's been a huge uh, problem that she's been out, but I think that Hannah has done a really nice job of kind of stepping into that role and kind of of, I mean, she's now on the all-freshman team, so that's all Big East freshman team, so that's been impressive for her. Marquette wins the point. Referee overruled. That one must have been clearly in if they were able to officially overturn it. Exactly, and Tice is usually so good with his challenges. I would love to see a stat on how many challenges he's won right. in his career here. So Gwyn Jones will head back to serve. It's 16 to 12 Marquette now since the call was reversed. Jones, Wirch, Rose, Vandenberg, Kuntz, and Orff. That's a unit for Marquette. Wirch sets one up for Vandenberg. Dug up by Lowe, Vandenberg puts it right back down, wow. She was right there and she knew exactly where that was going and she put it, had so much power on that. Time to jump perfectly, got her wrist directly on it, put it down. She didn't look like a freshman on that play. No, that's for sure. Good work by Olsenowski finding the seam and getting her team a point back. 17-13 on Olsenowski's first kill. Outside of Delaplane, four Villanova hitters have a kill. Oh, miscommunication for Villanova. Delaplane and Decker both thought the other was getting it. And Koontz ends up with the lucky kill. Definitely lucky. It didn't even look like it had that much power no, on it. That one was from the back row, too. So Speckman and Barber come back on. Decker for Potts off the hands of the blockers, and Kanavadov can't get there. 18-14.
Villanova definitely not letting Marquette get out to too big of a lead here. Into the net. Service error by Villanova, 19 to 14 now. Marquette leads. That is the second service error for the Wildcats. That could definitely come back and bite them. Without a doubt. But guess what, Zoe? Marquette, Marquette got one too. Service error. Again, that's happened twice where Villanova gets a service error and then Marquette has one as well. Katie Shesso is going to come on for the Golden Eagles. Hannah Vandenberg will come off. Shesso will play the, the three rotations in the back row and then come back off. 19-15. Orf. Got it over. Wow, that was a strange play. Orf was able to get it. There was an overpass by Villanova. And then Orf put it up, but nobody else was there. Just a strange sequence when Villanova should have had to pay for the service error. Exactly. Well, not the service error, I mean the overpass. 19-16. Speckman for Barber. Good dig in the back row. Delaplane, back row attack. Speckman sets this one up for Wurch. Right into the middle of the floor. 20 to 16, Marquette up. Anna Mar Morse just couldn't get her hands under that kill. I don't, know how, I don't know how she could have. No, there's no way. She was even on the ground and she couldn't. Wurch smoked that one. Martha Kanavadov at the service line. Barnes, dug up by Kanavadov. Wirch, it's back up. Barnes, Wirch blocked it, but out of bounds. Could have gotten the solo block, but wasn't able to angle it properly. 20 to 17. Villanova's got it back down to three. Nova's hitting 333 here in the set. Barber off that. Hands the blocker. Sophia Howling felt that one. Yeah, that looked like it hurt. Got her fingers bent back. Golden Eagles are hitting at point three nine four, so really doing great on the offense. Sarah Rose back on with Coots. Rose will serve. Decker for Howling on the slide. Wurch got her hands on it. Coots in. Steinbeck thought it was out. But Marquette takes a 22-17 lead on the Ellie Coots kill. Timeout once again for Villanova. Marquette up 22-17. Wurch and Barber each at four kills. Vandenberg and Jones have three, Kuntz has two, and Orff has one. Six assists for Speckman and Rose. Kanavadov has three. So Zoe Marquette looking pretty good right now. Yeah, I definitely think that, I mean, the Golden Eagles, they're hitting a point four one two. I think they're doing great on the offense. I mean, obviously, have, it, have done pretty well on the defense. They have 13 digs. Um, they have zero blocks. But that's been something that they struggle with all year. If you're looking at Villanova too, Claire Delaplane leads all hitters for Villanova with six kills on 12 attempts, so hitting pretty well. But the rest of her team really isn't. She's kind of been that person they've been relying on to get those kills for them. So I think Villanova's going to have to spread it out a little bit more if they're going to want to try to beat Marquette here. Yeah, there's a whole lot of things that you need to avoid when you're playing Marquette. And the errors are one of them. You have to play a clean game whether that's just attacking or at the service line. And so far, Villanova, three attacking errors and two service errors with one block error also. So they got to clean that up if they want to pull out a win here. Exactly. They and have extend to their season, nonetheless. Yeah, definitely. This is a winner go home situation for, I mean, both teams, but more for Villanova because they aren't necessarily secured a spot in the NCAAs yeah, I, yet. I was going to say, I don't know if you can consider this a winner go home for Marquette because they're pretty much guaranteed at least one more. Rose almost gets a service ace. Oh, big dig by Shesso in the back, but Howling put too much power on it. 
Katie Schisler went into a full swimming dive to try to get to that one, and she did, but couldn't get it up enough. 22 to 18. Sophia Howling is definitely an interesting player. Middle block transfer from University of Hawaii, who redshirted last season, but has three years of eligibility. Coots right into Regan Lowe. 23 to 18. Ellie Coots looking strong today. Vandenberg comes back on. Shesso goes off. Marquette still siding out at an 84.2 percentage. I'd say all Marquette hitters are looking strong today. They are. When you have five players over three kills, that's hard to defend. That's a Villanova-style offense. Potts, wow. Sent that one right into our boss, John Stempe, over there. At almost. The pads. Not almost, it hit his leg. Darn it. <laughs> Hopefully he's all right. That had a yeah, lot of power on it. It did, it did. Nova back within four. Vandenberg, Rose, back to Vandenberg. Lowe got the overpass. Vandenberg swings again. Villanova's gonna be in system now. Potts. That one stays in. Apparently it was tipped by somebody. I don't know who. Oh, it looks like Tyson's gonna yeah, challenge. Yeah, he's gonna challenge. I don't know who it hit. I don't either, I didn't. I guess Ellie Koontz might be the, the guilty party, but she said she didn't touch it. So Tyson will challenge again. He'll use his second challenge. If the call stands, it's 23 to 20. If it's reversed, 24 to 19. This, this would be a big thing if it was reversed because obviously Marquette would have set points. So this is, whole, Villanova's hoping, okay, let's keep it within three, but Marquette obviously wants that extra point to have right, right. set point. So I'm Dan Abington alongside Zoe Comerford here at the Al McGuire Center. Marquette leads Villanova 23 to 20 in the first set. It's been an up and down season for the Villanova Wildcats. They've had some good success, at least in Big East play, but they've also had some pretty tough losses this year. They lost to TCU, USC, they got swept. They got swept by Creighton. The sweep by St. John's might have been the low point of the year. They also lost to LaSalle in a five-set matchup. They got swept by Marquette. They lost to DePaul in a five-setter, and they lost to Marquette again the day after. But if you look at this whole schedule, one big win is over Creighton. They swept Creighton at home. Creighton, who was the, I believe, the number nine team in the country at the time. Um, and uh, that was by far the biggest win of the regular season for Villanova, and that's the reason why they are the three seed here in the Big East tournament. Definitely, that was a huge win for them. I mean, obviously, to be a, that's one of the first times that, that Villanova under head coach Josh Steinbeck has beaten a top 10 team. And just to do it at home, that was a huge confidence boost for Villanova. And then, obviously, the next day they beat Providence. But that was probably one of the biggest upsets. In, I mean, probably the biggest upset in the Big East volleyball. Talking a little more about Coach Steinbeck, his 13th season as head coach at Villanova. Most victories in program history. He was an assistant at Wright State, Cincinnati, and Penn State before coming to Villanova. In his playing days, he played at George Mason. And now he's leading the way for this Wildcats squad as their head coach. The call stands on the court. Steinbeck was also 2015 ABCA East Coach Re Region Coach of the Year, and he's just really turned this Villanova program around. And he was the Big East Coach of the Year in his first season in 2007. Almost a service ace, but Konovadov gets her hands under it. Decker, Olsonowski. Wurch got the dig. Sarah Rose with the setter dump. 24 to 20, set point. Sarah Rose saw there was no one there, so she just decided, all right, let's just put it over. You don't see that one from Sarah Rose too often. She has one, usually one, probably one or two a match. The only problem with her doing one of the center dumps is that it takes so long to process it because instead of normally when the center's going up, it's just a quick tip over. But when she has to do it, she can barely, she can't even see over the net. So she's got to put it up a little bit more. Martinez came in to serve. Potts blocked at the net. Miscommunication by Villanova. Free ball. 
Rose for Kuntz. Went back corner, it's out. Okay, really has to capitalize on those free balls, especially when it's set point. Twenty-four, twenty-one. Decker is serving. The senior setter from LaGrange, Illinois. Is that anywhere near you, Zoe? It's not that close, no. Oh, okay. Coots put that one into the face of Regan Lowe. Potts has it dug up by Kanavadov. Rose for Vandenberg. Overpass. Kuntz has that dug up. Delaplane, Rose, Kanavadov, Vandenberg blocked. Huge block for Villanova. Villanova loved that play. Olsenowski went crazy on the court as she got that. Good rally. I mean, Villanova's already fought off two set points. 24-22, still set point, of course. Rose for Kuntz. Beautiful play by Ellie Kuntz after she'd been swinging for so long. She decided to just tip that one over and give Marquette the first set, 25-22. Four kills each for Hope Wirch, Ali Barber, and Ellie Kuntz. Vandenberg and Gwyn Jones each with three. Wow, Marquette's attack really varied today. Definitely getting it out to all hitters, and all hitters are really doing a nice job. I mean, Hope Worch is four for seven, Ali Barber is four for nine, Ellie Coons is four for eight. So the top three hitters are hitting above a point three three three. So Marquette's offense has really gone off in this first set. I mean, and for Villanova, it has been all Claire Delplane. She's hitting a point three oh eight, six for thirteen. And really, what I said earlier is that they need to distribute to other people if they're going to try to take maybe even a second set. Yeah, the one thing to note about this Villanova team is that they do not give up. <laughs> That's for sure, especially when their season is on the line. It's not like you win one set against them and then you can coast the rest of the way. This is a team that is going to fight every inch and claw their way back into this one. Exactly, and you even saw that in the first set. They fought off two ma two set points, so they're, they're a team that doesn't go away. You think, okay, we have set points, but actually Villanova's going to be the ones to keep on fighting, so you really have to bring your best foot forward when you are playing the Wildcats. Della Plain leads the way in the match with six kills. Mallory Potts adds four for the Wildcats. Emma Decker, match high in assists with 12. Regan Lowe already has nine digs for Villanova. Marquette doesn't really have one player dominating either of those categories. As Rose has eight assists and Speckman has six. And then as far as digs goes, it's Speckman with four. Wirch, Vandenberg, and Jones all have three. And then two for Kanavadov and Libero. And that's something you don't see too much is Martha Knobdoff only having two digs after the first set. I think they're just not going after her. That I think a lot of teams realize if we're gonna She's send so the, if we're gonna send this serve to Knobdoff, the chances of it going oh, the chances of the play being turned around on us increase greatly. So I think they realize, hey, let's let's go at Hannah Vandenberg. Maybe we'll go at the setter in the back row, who knows? Exactly. So I think one of the things we were saying earlier, Dan, is in this second set, Marquette can't get complacent and think, okay, we won the first set, then we're obviously going to sweep. They have to think one point at a time. And then for Villanova, it's really like if they get out to a big lead early, they could kind of capitalize on the second set. So Marquette will serve first here in the second. It'll be Speckman back to serve. This Marquette team likes to play nice and fun and loose. At least that's the way they've always described it to us. And they don't, they don't like to, I mean, of course they like to play under pressure. That's fun too, but they like to make sure they're having fun out there and they don't let the pressure get to them. They don't let anyone see that they're being affected by the pressure. They're just having fun. They're out there 
playing the sport they love. Exactly, and I think they have, you've seen this in this match too, that they just play super loose and they just play like they have nothing to lose and they are really doing a nice job of getting everyone involved too. Speckman going to serve for the Golden Eagles. Service ace for Speckman to start out. Well, what a way to start out the second set yeah, right? for the Golden Eagles. Wow. Both teams hitting 333 exactly after the first set. Interesting. Potts. Put that one between the hands of Allie Barber. Mallory Potts gets Villanova on the board first. Barbara just couldn't get low enough on that one to get her hands under yeah. it. Served by Scheider. Barbara went into the block. Smart decision by Allie Barber. The ball ended up coming right back into her face underneath the net, so it's Marquette point. Barnes sends that one right near the booth. Sana Barnes, as I mentioned, right side hitter for Villanova. She can jump out of the gym. She's a USA track and field member back in high school. Was recruited to play both at Villanova. That ball is blocked and lands between four Marquette players. It's a miscommunication. Nobody could get there in time. Claire Delaplane and Howling on the block. 3-2, Villanova's up. Beckman for Wurch. Orf sends it way out. That wasn't even close. No. Sometimes you wonder why they even decide to just put it right back down instead of taking the free ball and going back in system. And that's one of those instances. Speckman for Barber, blocked. Villanova goes up 5-2. Villanova already has those two blocks this set. So really doing a nice job on the defense. In the first seven points, they've already matched their first set block totals. Probably a point of emphasis in the huddle after the first. Allie Barber puts one back corner, gets Marquette back on the board. Golden Eagles needing some momentum there, and Allie Barber will probably give it to you. Barnes able to find the seam between Kanavadov and Wirch. Expands the Villanova lead to three. Villanova's biggest lead of the day. Speckman for Barber. Tips it over. And then Barber, once the ball came right back at her, found the floor again. Six to four. Barber now up to seven kills for the Golden Eagles. The match high. And she and Speckman come off. Barber's already taken 14 swings today. Good work by Emma Decker right there. Sent one directly at Ellie Kuntz, who had to improvise a little bit and couldn't get it back up in time. 7-4, Villanova's up in the second set. Kuntz from the middle. Ellie Coots lighting it up today. Five kills for the sophomore lefty. A 
attack goes long. Oh, wait, never mind. It was ruled a touch. I don't know who touched that one. I don't either. I'm trying to figure it out right now who was the one who tipped that. Tice is not challenging, so he knows. Only has one left. Got to be careful. Don't want to waste that challenge now. Rose over to Vandenberg. Into the net. Blocked. Nine to five. Villanova leads in the second set. Villanova really coming out strong in the second set. They're five for five, or five for six on kills today in the second set. Hitting at a .833, so really doing great on the offense. Service error. Let's see if Marquette matches it this time. Nine to six. Marquette's up. Marquette's down, actually, my bad. Della playing from the back row. Big dig by Lowe. And the back corner is fouled by Villanova. 10 to 6. Kanavadov's going to come back on. Decker is back to serve. Coots into the middle of the floor. Ellie Coots, six kills on the day. Looks like she's the one that wasn't really game planned properly for. Definitely, Ten. they didn't know how to block her, so they haven't seen enough film of her, so they didn't really know how to game plan. A lot of teams struggle against a lefty because they're so rare, but you would think that Villanova, since they have Barnes, they would know how to utilize a lefty as Speckman sent one into the net herself. Service error for the Golden Eagles now. It's Marquette's third service error of the day. Both teams have three. That gives Villanova the three point, four point lead. Free ball. Forge put it in the back corner. Barnes blocked. Ali Barber and Elizabeth Orr got four hands up. Barnes just didn't get high enough on that jump to get it over them. I mean, when you have 6'5 and 6'3, it's hard to get over that. Yeah, especially when you're only 5'9. Barnes gets another swing, dug up by Vandenberg. Wirch off the block. Hope Wirch went after high hands right there. Her team's back down two. Vandenberg is now serving. Yeah. Speckman gets it up. Kanavadov for Barber. Also goes after the high hands. Marquette down one. 3-0 scoring run for the Golden Eagles. Maddie Scheider just looked and she was like, I know I shouldn't have touched that one because it was going out. Beckman gets her hands on it, but sent it into the bleachers. 12 to 10, Villanova's back up. Important to side out there and snap the streak. Kanavadov had to hustle to get to that one. Marquette is going to get it back over just barely. Good hustle from Vandenberg to get after that. Barber. Right into the seam. 
What a play from Marquette and so much hustle from Panabdov and Vandenberg and getting it up for Barber and she just finished off. Great defense from the Golden Eagles to regroup every time. It looked like they were out of it. They got right back in. Decker puts it up for Howling. Wirch was there. Barber swings, blocked. Sophia Howling again. It's right into the hands of Howling. Howling has four blocks. Yeah, I was saying, I'm gonna say, while we're talking about players that can jump, man, Howling can get up. Long arms, long legs. Recipe for success as a middle blocker. Service error, though. Four service errors now for Villanova. Rose and Coots coming back on. Barber's up to nine kills. Villanova do, done a better job of kind of spreading the wealth with Cl Pot, uh, Potts and Delaplane both having seven kills. They were over the line. That's the official ruling there. It looked like everyone in, a, in attendance was confused at when the referee just pointed at the ground, but Villanova crossed the line. So Marquette ties it up at 13, and then Rose, another service error. Especially when you're tied at 13, that's something you do not want to have happen is that unforced error because you're just basically giving Villanova the lead again. Vandenberg from the back row, right between Delaplane and Almond. 14-14. Marquette, the number 12 team in the nation, trying to get back to the Big East Championship today. Villanova Wildcats standing in their way. Gwyn Jones gets her team to lead back. going to be a media timeout on the floor with the score 15 to 14 Marquette now leads Marquette up 15 to 14 after it's been a bit of a struggle here in the second set more errors from the Golden Eagles than we normally see four service errors in the match and out they're now up to 10 attack errors five in the first five in the second Uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic. I couldn't, couldn't get that word out for a second. Uncharacteristic of Marquette. It definitely is, but I think that has something to do with how well Villanova has been playing on the defensive. I mean, they already have four blocks in this set, and they're hitting at a point three seven five. So really doing things on both sides of the ball and, and kind of making Marquette work for it a lot because Marquette had to crawl themselves back into this match even. They're trailing nine five at one point, and now they're up fifteen fourteen. So definitely had have had to do a lot of work compared to Villanova who were, had the momentum earlier. Yeah, they've really fought their way right back. Another matchup taking place after this one. St. John's, the fourth seed, taking off against the Creighton Blue Jays, who only had one loss in conference play, and that was two with the Villanova Wildcats. And a three-setter, too. Yeah. Creighton not used to getting swept, but Definitely they went not. to the Cat House and got beat. That's what it's called, by the way, the Cat House. <laughs> I think it's the Jake T. Nevin Fieldhouse, officially. But it's nicknamed the Cat House. Wildcats. Yeah, that makes sense. That uh -huh. makes sense. Villanova actually hasn't won a postseason game in the Big East Tournament since against Xavier in 2015, so looking for their first. Vandenberg's going to get a swing. Vandenberg pushes one to the back. Steinbeck was not happy about the call. That looked like a lucky play from Vandenberg. Yeah. Jones and her were up for the block, and then she got it, and she just tapped it back over, back to the back line. I think he knows he can challenge plays, or is he just going to plead with the officials? I think he should challenge. He hasn't <laughs> used any. No. I would. I guess you're bolder than Steinbeck is, Zoe. Maybe. Another point for Marquette on the block error. But it's probably because he knows it would go in the way of Marquette right, and why right. use it up anyway. 
Well, Mar why, why even argue with the ref if you know that it's going to go against you? It's true. Marquette's on a 4-0 scoring run, so yeah, really got all. going to take a timeout. Marquette up 17 to 14, and Villanova wants a pause. It's been a real shift in momentum here. That's for sure. You could see that Marquette was struggling early in that match, and then once they started getting back and fighting for every point, they got back in it, tied it up, and now are on a 4-0 scoring run, and Villanova's looking to stop it because they don't want to be da two sets down at the Al McGuire Center. You know, I, I just want to talk for a quick second. It's, it's kind of strange because from watching Marquette Volleyball, I've grown so accustomed to constant challenges and early challenges from Coach Ryan Tice. And watching a lot of Big East play, other coaches just simply don't use their challenges. And I, I don't know why you would. Why wouldn't if, you? If, yeah, if, you're, if you want to contend with a call, why wouldn't you just use it and then, you know, if, if you lose it, oh, well, you lose it. Yeah, but you still have those, so I yeah, I don't know why most don't. I think Tice is just a little, he wants to get in, and he wants to contest them, and he usually does well on that. So I would love to see his record in challenges. I know you can't see that, but I would love to see that because he's usually pretty successful at that. Cha-cha slide playing here. As we resume play, Wirch sends one long. Timeout was successful. Reagan Lowe now serving. Koontz has it dug up. Jones got blocked. Koontz again, back corner, it's in. Ellie Koontz, great court vision. That was a beautiful kill right towards that right corner. It's perfectly placed. It looked like it was going out for a little bit, but she got it right on in that corner. Perfect placement. Legitimately, that was about an inch away from being out. But it wasn't. It's a perfect spot. Decker sets one up for Potts. Out. Sent it too high. Point Marquette, 19-15. Timeout by Villanova. Villanova is getting a little nervous here. I mean, they're down four, and they really haven't, after that big lead, they haven't really sustained it. Yeah, I mean, you said earlier, you don't want to go down two sets at the Al McGuire Center because Marquette is going to punish you if you do. I mean, you don't want to go down one set either against Marquette, but especially if you're going down two and you need to win three in a row against the number 12 team in the country who is so strong on the attacking on defense and at the service line, you're in a bit a bit of trouble. Exactly, and I think it's something about Villanova, they have, at the beginning of the set, they were hitting a point seven five, and now they're hitting a point two seven eight. so being a little bit more sloppy on the offensive, and that's just something you can't do against the number 12 team in the nation. If you're gonna try to take the second set. It actually looked, at the beginning, I was like, okay, Villanova has looked so strong here on the offensive and defensive, they have a chance at taking the second set, but after now being a little bit more sloppy and more errors, I think it's gonna be really difficult for them to get kind of that momentum back. So it'll be Jones, Wirch, Rose, Orff, Vandenberg, and Kuntz from Marquette. Can't really see the whole Villanova lineup because the ref is in my way. So I won't even try to give you the six for Villanova. <laughs> it's hard when they're standing up there. It's hard yeah, to see over I mean, there. I, I see Decker, Lowe, and that's about all I got. Beautiful work by Mallory Potts finding the seam. Fitting it in the back row between left and center backs. Mallory Potts now leads the Wildcats with eight kills on 15 attempts. And he a point four six seven. so really done a nice job since coming in. Della Plain hasn't gotten a kill I know, we, in the second. I haven't heard her name in a while. Service error. Point Marquette, 20 to 16. Here comes Speckman and Barber. The death lineup for Marquette. 
That's always a scary sight when you see an All-American trotting her way back onto the court. Wirch, Speckman, back to Wirch in the back row. Villanova barely gets it back over. Barber. That one stays in. What a nice play from Villanova. Great defense from the Wildcats. They just kept getting the ball back over, even when you thought they weren't. It looked like a player hit it twice. Or just a little bit of something weird happened and Tice was talking to the referee about it, but no call. Orf able to get the kill. Just her second of the day. 21-17, Marquette's up. Barnes gets blocked by Orphan Barber. That's the Golden Eagles' last block, too, is Orphan Barber against Barnes. I guess that's the dynamic duo up there, 6'5 and 6'3. When you got hands up that high. Barber, big swing, block, but it goes out. 23-17, Marquette's up. Tice showing off his arm, throwing that ball back to the ball boy. Exactly, Golden Eagles once down four, now are up six. Nice dig from Speckman. Kanabadov sends this one for Vandenberg. Free ball. Speckman for Vandenberg from the back line. Barber puts one right into the thigh of Emma Decker. Set point. 24-17. Golden Eagles on a 4-0 scoring run here. Speckman gets it up, but that one finds the floor. Zoe, I was thinking that that might be the first set of the season that wasn't decided by seven points or less. Oh, dang. I didn't want to say anything, because I didn't want to jinx you, it, but yeah. I guess I thought it too Maybe much. you thought it, and then you jinxed it through thought. Villanova's sure good at fighting off set points, though. They are. They have a lot of fight in them. Orf, right side attack. Kanavadov gets on it. Wirch gets the point for the Golden Eagles. 25-18, Marquette takes the second set. Marquette leads 2-0. That is something that Villanova did not want to have happen. Now they're down two sets and having to claw their way back in this match and kind of try to keep their season alive. Both teams heading back to the locker rooms for this five minute break. Nobody don't see Marquette take a uh, take a locker room break, but hey, maybe they're changing it up for the postseason. Maybe. Oh, we're gonna have the drum line come out. Ooh. I think this is fun. Half I like time. it. Love, love the drum line. Always been a drum guy. The Sixers at their games, they run out the uh, the Sixers Stixers. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a drum line that they bring out. Yeah. And I'm always bopping along. That's at fun. Games, so. Sometimes at Marquette games, men's basketball games, and yeah. sometimes at the Bucks games, they also have it too. I, they do. I like it. It's fun. Big fan of drum lines over here. Jack Phillips, the producer to my left, a former drummer himself, has said that he would be the Wire Sports drummer in a Wire Sports band. Oh, that would be in fun. Case I was wondering. <laughs> so a little half, not halftime, a little set. I, I don't even know what this is called. Intermission. Intermission. Entertainment. Yeah, yeah. We got some drum line. I'm sure everyone at home can hear it through our headsets. Yeah, for sure. I won't be able to touch, talk much volleyball here in the next three minutes because I will be <laughs> enthralled by the drummers. So Zoe, Marquette took the first 25-22, took the second 25-18. What'd you see out of Marquette? 
I mean, in the first day, I mean, it, it was Marquette. Really, they did a really nice job on the offensive, really distributing to everyone. They struggled in early in the second set, going down 9-5, and then kind of clawing their way back, like we said, and just fought and fought, and then they ended up going up 24-17 and then finishing off this at 25-18. So you saw a lot from Villanova in the second set getting out to a strong start, but they didn't really sustain it, and you're going to need to sus sustain that if you want to kind of take another set off of Marquette. But I think Villanova is going to come out after this break and just do some amazing thing I, not amazing thing but i think they're gonna play really tough and you said earlier dan that villanova doesn't go away and i think that's what's gonna happen in this third set they're gonna come out strong after the break and maybe even take a set off marquette get out to a strong start as far as stats go marquette led by ali barber with 11 kills coots has seven vandenberg and Wurch each have six for Villanova Potts has nine, Delaplane has seven. Exactly, and Dan, if you look at these stats, Ali Barber's hitting at point four hundred, Ellie Koontz is hitting at point five hundred, and Hope Wurch is hitting at point four five five, and then Gwyn Jones is hitting at point eight hundred. So all of these Marquette, so these hitters are doing an amazing job at the offensive and keeping it, uh, get, and handing it out to the hot hitters. These drummers are phenomenal, by the way. I cannot take my eyes off the drums. I couldn't do this. This is impressive. I used to play the snare drum. Did in, you? in fourth grade, I That's played fun. the snare drum. I, I was not good at it, but I, I played. I could not do that. I could never be on drum line. I actually, I played in band, but I played saxophone, so not, uh, not this a coordinated. Bit different. It's a definitely different. different. The choreography to go along with the drumming, not easy. It's not easy. Zoe, what do you think? Villanova needs to do here in, uh, in the third set if they want to storm their way back and if they want to continue their season. Yeah, exactly. I think, I mean, Mallory Poss has done a really, really nice job at, I mean, she leads the Wildcats with nine kills on 17 attempts, hitting it a .471, and she really only came in towards the end of the first set and the second, so she dominated in that second set and was kind of the reason why Villanova got all those points, but then they, Claire Delaplane, we haven't heard a lot from her recently, so I think that she really needs to, like, she really needs to get those kills, and they, I mean, maybe it's just because she's hitting in a .263, but I think she needs to get a little bit more involved if, if if they're going to try to be Marquette in this third set, they have to get more than one player involved on the hitting aspect. But they've done a nice job on the block. So they have six blocks total compared to Marquette's just two. So did a really nice job on the blocking, not so great at the at hitting or on offensive, except for Mallory Potts. I'm pretty sure all Big East teams, other than Seton Hall, are a better blocking team than Marquette, which is kind of crazy because if you're the number 12 team in the country, you would expect that you have a strong blocking presence too, or at least an adequate blocking presence. But Marquette, for some reason, they are so good at attacking. Their back row is so strong. They're really aggressive serving. But man, when it comes to blocking, they are just, they're ninth in the Big East as far as blocks. Yeah, and Dan, like you said, that's crazy to be number 12 in the, in the nation and really having being ninth in the Big East for blocking. And it's something they've been working on all season, but I feel that they're very streaky with it. Sometimes they'll do a really nice job, but most times it's just two blocks or three blocks yeah. in a set. So definitely not, they definitely have to work on that if they're gonna go further in the NCAA tournament. At this point of the year, I don't know how much you can still work on things. <laughs> it's kind of a, you either have it or you don't when you get to the postseason. And I think Marquette's good enough in all other facets of the game that they haven't had to worry too much about blocking. Like, I mean, if you're going to beat the number four team in the country in Wisconsin and not even have a strong blocking presence, then I think you're going to take it. Exactly. And if you're looking at their how they rank nationally, they're second in the NCAA with 14.07 assists per set, and they're fourth in the NCAA with 14.75 kills per set. So, like you said, Dan, they're so good on the offensive. The defensive, they don't really need to do that much because they are so good at getting those kills. All right, so we'll resume play here at the Owl. Service ace for Reagan Lowe to start it off. Vandenberg couldn't see that bullet coming. So we had two service aces to start off sets two and three. One for each team. Barber went off high hands. 
Della Plain read that one completely wrong. Well, if you need a guaranteed point, you usually go to Allie Yeah, Bobber. that's right. You can pretty much guarantee when you go to her that it's at least going to stay in bounds. Or go off high hands or something. Service error for Hannah Vandenberg. Kathleen Johnson comes on for the Wildcats. Was Big East all freshman team this year. Hasn't played yet today. Wirch has that one dug up by Decker. Johnson has it brought up. Barber gets blocked by Johnson and Olsenowski. Yeah, Kathleen Johnson is such an impressive player. She was a fresh, she's a freshman right side who averages 2.96 kills per set and is hitting in a .435 clip. So I'm surprised that Coach Steinbeck didn't put her in earlier. She's only played in 25 sets on the season because Barnes is their main right side. Low can't get her hands fully on that one. And Barber gets her 13th kill of the day. She's hitting 375. And also has two blocks and a dig. 24 total attacks, four errors. It's definitely a little bit higher error numbers than usual, but she, is, she has taken 24 attempts. I mean, she's hitting 375. You can't ask much more. She's averaging 4.68 kills per set coming into today. 33 blocks, eight service aces. Villanova can't even get that one over. An attack error. Marquette takes their lead four to three. Yeah, Ellie Barber ranks 17th. Oh, no, 3 3, sorry. Ellie Barber ranks 17th in the NCAA with, with 487 co total kills and four, uh, 15 for 4.64 kills per set. So just huge offensive power for Marquette. Marquette barely gets it up. Blocked by Olsenowski and Mallory Potts. Man, Villanova goes absolutely insane anytime they get a block. Already gotten seven today, so they have reason to celebrate. Eight. It's impressive. Make it eight. Oh, it's eight. That's it. See, they get so excited because they do it so often, and they're so good at it. Olsenowski and Howling have combined for eight. Jones with the roll shot off the slide. When she hits some of them so hard, and then she goes to the roll, there's nobody behind them. It's so hard to game plan. It's like, okay, is she going to hit it hard or is she just going to hit it, just tap it over on the roll? Right. Rose sends one out. That is four service errors. Or three service errors on Sarah Rose, not four. Seven total for Marquette. Man. Jones just tips that one over. She got lucky. She just kind of missed it. and <laughs> Got like her thumb on it or something <laughs> enough to just put it over the net and over the blockers and down it goes. 5-5 five, five, as Jones gets her sixth kill. Definitely lucky on that one. Worth serving. Vandenberg slams it into the back corner. Off some high hands. Off the hands of Scheider. It's just too powerful and it just got off her hand and just went straight back and no one from Villanova was there. Service ace for Hope Worch, the Big East ace leader. Now she has 55, the same oh. as she had all last season. So already tied up with what she had last season. She's so aggressive at the service line. And that leads to a whole lot of aces. Johnson right between Kanavadov and Wirch. She is springy. She can get way up. There's a reason why she was a triple jumper in high school. A lot of, 
a lot of times when we'll see a right side hitter that can jump the way Barnes and Johnson can as Vandenberg gets a big kill. A lot of times, some of these outside hitters played, or they ran track, or they participated in some kind of jumping. And you can tell because of how high they can get up and how well conditioned they are. Howling sends it long and wide. An attack error, nine to six, Marquette lead. Howling just didn't get a good hand on that one. Decker sets one up for Delaplane. Off the block, finally, Delaplane gets a kill. I think that's her, her first, first kill. Yeah, her first since, kill like since the, the second first set. set. First set. Yeah. Delaplane, 5'11 outside hitter from Downers Grove, Illinois. That one is close that to That is me, close actually. to you. I knew yes. that. Her brother played collegiate baseball at Coe College. Athletic family. Vandenberg. Goes off high hands. And that ball gets sent to the sideline. 10-7. This Nova team has a whole lot of talent all around. Player that doesn't really get talked about too much. Libero Reagan Lowe. She's had an impact since her first season at Villanova. Last year she was fourth or set the record. Ooh. Collision between Potts and Allman on the floor as they were both going for the dig. Barber gets the kill. But as I was talking about low, last year she was fourth in program history in digs with 616, averaged 5.35 per set on her way to being all Big East. Potts goes off the block. That one got sent into the pin. Mallory Potts, another one with a athletic family. Her sister played volleyball at Rhode Island. Her brother played Texas Lutheran basketball. A lot of uh, athletic families. Yeah, definitely. Olsonowski went over the net and put it right in front of Lauren Speckman. 11 to nine, Marquette's up. Villanova clawing their way back. Barber, once again, in that 5-6 seam. You know it's coming and you still can't stop it. That's exactly. the craziest thing. She puts so much power on it and she gets so high above the net that it's really hard to stop it, even if you tried. That's why she's an All-American. Yep, and unanimous Big East Player of the Year. Hope Wirtz was in the net. And that is another kill for Mallory Potts, her 11th. She's in double digits. The only one for Villanova up that high. She's also hitting in a .500. Only one error for her. 20 total attacks. Lowe got it up, but it went into the net, and then Potts and Olsenowski couldn't get it, so Orff gets the kill. 13-10. Nova siding out of the 62.3%. Potts again. Sent that one off the outside of the block. Potts has so much energy, especially when she gets those kills, she gets so excited. So she really she brings really up does. the energy of her yeah. whole team, I would say. That one goes off the pin. An attack error by Ali Barber. 13 to 12. Marquette leads. Villanova quickly, quickly closing the lead. Jones. That one's dug up. Nova ties it up. Is Tice going to want a timeout soon?
13 all. Service error by Maddie Scheider out of Gibsonia, Pennsylvania on the western side. My high school played against hers in the state championship in football. Interesting. My senior year, Pine Richland. Mm. They beat down on us that year. That was sad. So the last time it was 13-13, last set, it was actually Marquette who had a service error to give Villanova the 14-13 lead. So a little bit oh. of a switch up here. Jones gets the kill there, gives Marquette 15-13 lead, and that will send us into the media timeout. So Marquette up 15-13 here at the media timeout. Barber has 15 kills for the Golden Eagles. Vandenberg has nine. For Villanova, they're being led by Mallory Potts with 12. Claire Delaplane has eight. Emma Decker leading the way with 26 assists. 11 digs for Reagan Lowe for their team high. Wirch has 11 digs for the Golden Eagles. Speckman leads the way in assists with 18. And Rose has 16. Both teams, though, having really good offense and limiting the errors. I mean, Villanova has two errors on 13 attempts, but and are still hitting at a point three eight five, and Marquette's hitting at a point four 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 with three errors. So both teams doing really well on the offensive. That's why the score is only 15-13. A lot of stuff going on in Marquette sports today. Obviously, volleyball happening right now. Women's basketball will be taking on St. Mary's, I believe, in seven minutes. Men's basketball playing right now against USC down in Orlando. As of one minute ago, they were leading 23 to 13 in the first half. Marcus Howard, 16 points on five for seven shooting already. Not surprising. Marquette on an 18 to two run on USC. I mean, Marcus Howard dropped 40 points last night, so I'm not surprised he already has 16. Right. Rose serves it to get back to volleyball. Johnson improvises. Vandenberg from the back row. Decker puts it up for Johnson. Wirch off the hands of the blocker. And Wirch gives her team a three point lead, 16 to 13. Marquette hitting 450 in this frame. Delaplane, big dig by Sarah Rose. Wirch gets blocked. Kanavadov and Wirch ran into each other, so no dig. 16-14 as Kathleen Johnson and Ali Olsonowski get the block. Olsonowski serving now. Low, not on the court in this rotation. Wirtz sends it wide, no touch. Long and wide, actually. 16 to 15, Nova's not out of it yet. Villanova keeps fighting back. Marquette can't get too comfortable with the lead because you know Villanova's coming back even harder. Olsenowski tries to get it over. That had to be four touches, no. That one goes out off Jones. I don't know how that one wasn't four. I thought it was four. But Tice just talked to the ref. Tice again a challenge. Tice is one for one for challenges today, so. One for two. Oh, one for two, that's right. One and one. One and one, so. It'll be interesting to see what he, what the refs are going to look at this and say. So if the call stands, it's tied up at 16-16. Nova on a 3-0 scoring run. Marquette wants it to be 17-15, to though. Winner of this matchup takes on the winner of the next matchup tonight, St. John's 
against Creighton. That's bound to be a good one too. Yeah, definitely. St. John's is a really strong team. But as everyone knows, Creighton, pretty good, you could say. Definitely. Top 10 in the country. They're uh -huh. all right. Only lost once in conference play this year. To Villanova. They beat Marquette, who was in the top 10 in the country both times they played them. No big deal. So Creighton versus St. John's. That'll be an interesting one to watch. I will certainly still be here scouting out for our broadcast tomorrow, Zoe. If Marquette takes this match. Well, I'll be here either Regardless. way. Regardless, okay. I got I got the media pass. Why not? That's true. Yeah, why not? Honestly. Watch some high-level volleyball from courtside. I got nothing to lose. Yeah, I definitely think that's going to be an interesting one. St. John's is 12 and 6 record overall, 7 and 2 in co or 7 and 2 at home and um, they've had a really impressive season as well. So I think that could be a very interesting match. I mean, it's Creighton at number 10 in the country against St. John's who's even though they're the 4th seed, they have had an impressive season. So yeah, I mean, looking at the all-conference list, they had a couple players on there. Efrosini Alexicu, Erica Damalo, and Raquelu Rastelli. And then, in addition, they've got a bunch of great players like Amanda Sinabia as uh, she's their libero. She's really good. They've got a couple other really good options on the outside and in the middle, including Hannah Wagner as their middle. So St. John's not a team to be messed with, and We'll see if that one is closer than a lot of people expect. The call is upheld. Didn't rule four touches. So that'll be a Villanova point tied up. Delaplane hustled to get there, but Olsonowski couldn't get the second one. Couldn't get the second touch. She's on the ground, but just couldn't get her hands under it. Marquette will go up again on top. Hope Orge back to serve again. Decker sets it up for Delaplane. Coons barely got that up. Worch put it off the hands of Scheider. Lucky she got a touch on that yeah. one. That was going out. And she knew it too. As soon as she touched the ball, it was like, oh, why'd I do that? Sometimes you, that happens and you just can't get your hands down with enough time. Ball's coming at you so fast. I mean, especially from Hope Arch. Yeah, got to make a split-second decision. Sometimes you choose wrong. Warch with a free ball. Decker gets blocked. Vandenberg sends that one right over near us. Could have grabbed that one, Zoe. I could have, but it started rolling before it. If you had longer arms, you might have been able to get there. I know, darn. Thanks <laughs> to be sure. Could never be a volleyball player. You could play libero. That's true. Still, 411 is short to, for yeah. Libero. They can round you up to 5 0. Vandenberg gets a swing. Good defense from Villanova to get it over. Wurch, Rose, Jones. Gwyn Jones gives Marquette a two point advantage. Golden Eagles have done a really nice job. I mean, Allie Barber's been out for a while, and the Golden Eagles have still gotten those kills. Jones, Vandenberg. Decker for Delaplane. Deflected by Marquette and still in. So, point for Villanova and outside hitter Claire Delaplane. Villanova definitely giving Mar Marquette a fight in this third set here. Delaplane really the only player for Villanova that plays all six. Hannah Vandenberg, wow. Packing some power. 20 to 18. Golden Eagles are up. Also, just as I say that Delaplane plays all six. She, goes she comes down. off. For, oh, it's just the my broadcaster's luck. curse. Just my luck. Dan, it's the broadcaster's curse. Speckman and Barber are back on. Nice catch, Dan. Thank you, thank you. Dan, you caught that I one. Go with it. <laughs> Just give it back to the yeah, ball guy. I did. That's an ace for Lauren Speckman. Her, is that her third of the day or second? 
Second. Second. This one almost goes back into the student section, but Villanova able to play it right back in. Vandenberg swings, gets one down. Timeout for Villanova. Steinbeck saw enough. 22-18, Marquette leads. Three points away from the Big East Championship. Anna Vandenberg doing a really nice job here. She's 11 for 29, hitting a .276, and really come, have, has come through in the in the in this set. When Allie Barber's not been in, she's really been getting those kills from Marquette. Barber up to 15 kills. Vandenberg has 11. Wirch, Jones, and Koontz each have eight. Golden Eagles on a 3-0 scoring run. Josh Steinbeck says, nope, we got to stop here. They're announcing over the PA the uh, all Big East teams and the honors. Barber, unanimous Big East player of the year. Libero of the year was uh, Brittany, Brittany Witt, Witt from Creighton. Freshman of the year, Keely Davis, outside hitter from Creighton. And coaching staff of the year, Kirsten Bernthal Booth. From Creighton <laughs> as well. And so her Creighton, coaching staff. Creighton got three of those awards. No, speaking of Ali Barber, this will be interesting, Dan. Next year when we broadcast Villanova, it'll be a different Barber. I mean, it'll be Ali Barber's younger sister, but for Cre for uh, Villanova instead, yeah. sister committed to play at Villanova next year, so or in a couple years, so that'll be interesting to see. It'll be a different Barber on the court for Villanova Marquette for the other side. Definitely wonder who she's cheering for today. <laughs> Probably her sister, but. Uh, you would assume, but who knows. Orf, off the quick set, slams it right down. 23-18, two away. Barber said, meet me at the net right there. 24-18 after Barber gets the, I guess, the, the little tip. I don't even know what that one's called, but 24-18. Marquette, match point. Oh, Speckman said that one way low. Almost went under the net. 24-19. Golden Eagles' seventh, eighth service error of the match with match point. Beckman, Barber, and Marquette is headed to the Big East Championship. And how fitting, it ends on a Speckman to Barber kill. The Golden Eagles sweep the Villanova Wildcats in the Big East semifinals, 25-22, 25-18, 25-19. Zoe, really a, an impressive Marquette performance today. Yeah, I think it was so impressive, Dan, and especially since last time Villanova played at the Alamo Gar Center, they took a set off of Marquette, and then Marquette coming out here in the Big East Championships in the semifinals and getting a three-set sweep over Villanova. Even though they struggled in the second set, they came back and just dominated in that third set. And I think the Golden Eagles have really showed why they're the number 12 team in the nation. They just don't go away. And I mean, we said Villanova didn't go away, but I think Marquette has done a really nice job of really spreading the wealth and I mean Allie Barber had 16 kills leading the Golden Eagles but Hannah Vandenberg really stepped up having 11 kills of her own yeah really just an impressive overall performance from the Marquette Golden Eagles they take the three set victory over the Villanova Wildcats that's likely it for Villanova's season great season for Villanova led by head coach Josh Steinbeck but Marquette heads to the Big East Championship against the winner of Creighton and St. John's Today, that's happening here at the Al McGuire Center. You can follow me on Twitter for updates at Dan Abington, and I will have updates from that matchup to decide who takes on Marquette tomorrow. Zoe and I will be here for that matchup tomorrow at the Big East Championship. So, Zoe, you got anything to say before we uh, finish it off? Um, I think Villanova had a really strong performance in that second set, but just fell a little bit short. And I think the Golden Eagles, I, once again, I want to say that they spread the wealth really well. And I think that's something that they're going to need to do against it. If they play Creighton or St. John's, either team in the Big East Championships, they're going to have to do that. Well, that's going to do it for us here on Marquette Radio. No post-game show. John Leuzzi uh, has other commitments, so he can't finish off the post-game show for us. But we want to thank everyone out there for tuning in today for our presentation of 
Marquette Volleyball versus Villanova. The Golden Eagles take a three-set sweep over the Villanova Wildcats and advance to the Big East Championship tomorrow. Make sure to tune in tomorrow afternoon as Zoe and I have the call of the Big East Championship live here on Marquette Radio. But signing off, alongside my partner Zoe Comerford, I'm Dan Abington. Have a great night.